There's probably only about a hundred bucks worth of gimmicks in there. Hmm. That's well, you're gonna put tell them the date. Oh, what is the date? <laughs> Today's June the um, June third. Third. It's June twenty third. Yeah, I circled it. How it's supposed to be here, June third. So yeah. I bet I got in Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta revise my calendar. Okay, so it is what June third. It's June third, nineteen eighty nine. This it's is like uh, twelve, no, about eleven thirty. Eleven thirty in the morning. We're having morning. coffee with chicory in it. And North it's Carolina. Good. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good. And I'm Pat. Yeah, and uh, and Colette's one of my people now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a letter from Whitley Streber. See that? Yes. Red okay. and white envelope. Open it up. Okay. And you can read it. Great, I had that conversation with David on the phone yesterday. So I'm warning you now. What? This is the point of no return. The point of no return, that's right. That, um... You want to know what's going on? Why did you come all the way up to Trenton to see me, Kyle? To find out what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> So is this some kind of form paper I got to sign? Yeah, but we can do that later. Alice has to do that too. <clears throat> Eat it later in the car when we're with my mother if you want. While we finish our coffee here. Non-local residents who cannot pay their own way to New York will be sent economy class air tickets. Persons traveling in by train should obtain receipts for. Going to reimburse us. For the train. For the train. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And taxi. There train. will be returning to uh, New York. Are we going to stay the night in New York? No, I didn't plan on it. Because you got to work, right? Yeah. Okay. Not only that, but Whitley Stewart's going to be. Um, Why don't you record this? <coughs> yeah, it's being. Okay. Is it being recorded? Yeah. Oh, I thought you turned it off. No. Yeah. Um, Whitley Stewart just called me yesterday, and and is. Uh, wife Ann and uh, told me that he was just leaving to go to LA so he's gonna go for like a week or two weeks mm -hmm. so if we stayed overnight it still wouldn't help seeing Whitley right and he told us he was gonna be away the day we're going up on Tuesday but um, I thought maybe if we went Monday we could be with him and he said no he's leaving today so I told him we're gonna be disappointed in him not being there <laughs> and he says well he realizes that but maybe we can get together in the fall He's going to L.A. to meet the publicists, all the people that are pushing his movie, promoters and all. And uh, in September it's going to come out and uh, they wanted to have a meeting with him to plan how they're going to pub publicize the movie Communion. Yeah. thought it would be nice if I... Um Coming up from North Carolina, I get a phone, like my father-in-law said. Why didn't you? <laughs> right. Okay, great. So I'll sign those. Should I sign them now? No, we'll wait. Yeah, Alice has to sign them also. Okay. Okay. We'll just set that there. And mm -hmm. um, actually, you got to go get your mom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can. Well, I want to talk about SSI, Space Science Institute, for a few minutes. They just had their conference, and... Uh, the public was invited, it was a week-long conference, and all these companies, uh, General Dynamics and General Electric and... Uh, Atlas. Oh, yeah, all kinds of different companies were there. And uh, uh, on Saturday, they opened it up to the public for the review and the um, uh, resume, uh, like, uh, recapture everything that happened during the week. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I went. There. I was on variable voice activation. Oh. Oh. But now I'm cool. So, uh, with Space Science Institute in Princeton, uh, they had a meeting there, I guess it was about a month ago. And at the uh, end of the week long lecture, they had this recapture of all the most important parts of all the different speeches that everybody gave from all the companies and research facilities that came throughout the world. And uh, they're pushing for a return to the moon. And they gave me uh, posters, a return to the moon posters, so I can hang them up at my meeting and everything. And they're taking 
making petitions, uh, having people sign petitions uh, to, to tr get us to return to the moon, send, send to the government. Um, and uh, in New York is the uh, headquarters for this um, uh, return to the moon organization. And uh, they want us to, uh, they have different rocket vehicles and, uh, and all types of boosters and things for us to send up to the, uh, the moon and, and land on the moon and become living quarters on the moon for the first men and women on the moon to start living. And they want them to start living there in the environment and uh, then eventually to start to mine the moon with of the minerals that we can use. And with using these minerals, we can shoot them up with uh, massive drive well, systems the people to, have to uh, wear some kind of masks build a space so that they would you know, yeah, they have a body suit or yeah, something? Yeah, they'll have body suits and also uh, living quarters where they I would can, think that that would take a special individual to be able to live in a body suit. Oh, yeah. Astronaut. Or, yeah, but mineral, they want people to uh, begin uh, mining the moon. That's why they want the living quarters up there and be able to start living there, actually. So, so they when build they onto want it to start? As soon as possible, actually. So uh, it was real exciting. Uh, I taped the entire three-hour session, and it's real interesting. Uh, all kinds of things, and then they got into sending our manned missions to Mars with the Ru with the Russians, and that was real exciting. They wanted to set uh, like five different space stations up there between Earth and Mars for um, our spaceship to go by and in case they uh, broke down in any like way they can, yeah they can go into it and uh, get medical supplies get uh, replacement parts to fix the computers or the drive system or the rockets or whatever what, what went wrong and uh, the jets and things uh, so and food and they wanted like five different stations all along the way in our millions of mile journey to mars but the Russians sent, uh, this is To one. Mars or to the moon? Well, that would be to Mars. We're, in 1995, we're joining the Russians and sending a manned expedition. First, we're sending um, satellites to Mars. Russia already sent two satellites to Mars last year. They sent one in August, uh, Phobos 1, and Phobos 2 was sent in October, I believe. In January, they stopped receiving messages from Phobos 1 and they couldn't figure out what happened. And then all of a sudden, two months ago, they stopped receiving messages from Phobos 2. So, you combine that together with the face on Mars that they've just discovered, uh, well, not just, but it's just becoming news now uh, on the television. Um, they discovered a giant sculpture, not a face, on, of a mountain on Mars. And, uh, um, Didn't they find pyramids on Mars? Maybe it means, yeah, they or found pyramids along with the face right. of Mars. Right, I heard that, there were, that they had found some so they're afraid pyramid now. structures. Maybe they don't want us to get to Mars. Maybe God doesn't want us to get to Mars. They don't want us up there yet. Maybe we're not allowed to become a space Station. journeying. Well, I think, yeah, well, until we get our own act together, spiritually right. down here, yeah. I could see that, we couldn't could, you? We could be devastating. We're like kids warring with each like kids warring with each other. See? See the face on Mars? Oh, wow. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I just think that maybe we're, you know, the, uh, maybe God doesn't want us there yet, you know. We're not allowed, to, we're still children growing up and maybe we're in our adolescence stage and they're uh, Where technology is, is far above our spiritual awareness, obviously. Yeah, so uh, they want us to uh, get even keel before we, uh, they allow us to be too. Uh, well, we're going to have to. Uh, space traveling civilization. We're going to have to find a balance. We're going to have to That's tr uh, control the Didn't he write a book? And what was that book he wrote?
Stephen Hawkins? Yeah. Uh, he I wrote a book. Did he? Yeah, I forget the name of it, but uh, a new book that came out he wrote. On, on, on uh, space travel? Yeah, stuff what? like that. I want yeah. to learn. There is He's a one of the scientists, obviously, in this group that uh, feel that that's intelligently made, the face on Mars mountain. Whoa, look at that. There it is. There's your city. See? The yeah. pyramid city. Uh-huh. And another pyramid and the face. Oh, man. Where did you buy this book? Where did I buy it? <laughs> I find my books all over the world. I'd like to get this book. Well, maybe I can get you one. I'll try. I'll give you the money up front. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. there was that... About Fourteen dollars. Yeah. And stuff. Fifteen, something like that. There was a man that went down to Chief's. Uh, Chief is this man down, this Indian medicine man down in Old Fort. Yeah. But he uh, is involved with... The, he worked with the government for years and years and years and all that. I forget what his name is. But he was the one who went down to Chief's last year and was telling them that they had photos of pyramids and that, that they'd had them for a long time, but it was being hushed up. Yeah, 1976, the Viking 1 spacecraft took these And it was being um, hushed up and stuff. Yeah, know. that's right. So yeah, that who's Chief's? Chief is, uh, his name is... Is this the Indian chief you're talking yeah. about? Do you go down the city to talk to? Yeah, down to Old Fort, and I visit with him once in a while. Oh, well, and he's got, and down. he's Helen and that's where I met. From. Through him, or yeah, down there at the at Old Fort, oh, wow. down at his little place. Uh huh. Oh, at his house. Yeah. Oh. He's got. It seems like his house is uh, like a gathering place for new the, age people. Yeah, or, per se. Yeah. I don't know why I hate that term, New yeah. Age. It's just because I... you got so many uh, yippies along with it or whatever. Well, right, yeah, well, see, being in L.A., you know, going to health food stores and picking up the, the printed articles that they have, and then it used to just be on nutrition stuff, and then the New Age came in, and then you have all these psychics and all these channelers yeah. and people wanting to sell crystals. And, right, right. And I'm not, you know, yeah. that's just commercialism. Well, the crystals are helpful, uh, but they're in it for the money. Right, yeah. and uh, and I don't I don't of course see. Because they have to live, you know, just like me, I have to live eventually. But I, I don't live. see how somebody can just you know go buy a bunch of crystals and start selling them and study a book for a month and, and be able to give advice on them oh, on, yeah. on how to work on yeah. them, you know. Yeah. Because there's too there's, many of them. That's what bothers me, yeah. or it bothers me to go to like a, a new age bookstore or some place where it's just a big hype mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's like I've been studying this stuff for years. You know, and it's mm -hmm. not like Well do you ever have any uh, psychic fairs down in your room? Yeah, a lot of them. Oh yeah? Yeah. Did you ever go there and, and not yet, um, no. start building up a clientele? No. I don't I doubt that do I that. So that you can start living what you like to do in helping people. Well, I why? guess all in its own time. I mean, why don't you want to? Um, I guess because long, for a long time my clairvoyancy kind of scared me. Huh. Do you accept I, it now? Oh yeah. I started accepting it more and more about eight or nine years ago when I realized I had, that I could direct it in a positive manner actually help people with it. Yeah. Well, I but think I that you, you should get into that and you should be able to start. But I just don't want to be known as like a psychic, mm -hmm. you know, because there's the stigma behind, oh yeah, she's psychic or, you know. Well, what kind of stigma? I don't know, you know, this like you got the palm up in your window. Oh, palm, yeah. You know, I, yeah. Guess, I guess there's a stigma behind it. That well, I you don't have to do that. Um, well known by your Plus, I've met a lot of people that say that they're psychic in. And they're not really. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah. And they're charging you 45 bucks. And, yeah. And they're just, they talk like this, and they talk so etherical, you know. 
and they never gave me any information. That was the only person that was really right on was that the guy in LA that yeah. I had seen a couple times. He was the only one that was able to really tell me specifics. As I see, until I meet somebody that can do what I can do, I really don't feel that they're psychic because I feel like a lot of people just use generalizations. Yeah. And they, they create the fact that they're psychic. It's, it's June 2nd, 1989. We're with Colette. This is tape number one. So, he really helps you, you feel, right? Uh, to some degree, yeah. Okay. He used cards. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a certain layout that he did, but he was able to pick up that I was into yoga. Yeah. And like be specific on certain things. Yeah. And I've never met anybody that was able to really do that. I've, I've met other psychics that they will predict the future, and the future's never what they predict. No. <laughs> you know? No. Hmm. And it seems like a lot of them, they want to uh, say, oh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of money. Oh, mm -hmm. you're going to do a lot of traveling. And, you know, it seems like there's the basics. They don't get too much into the emotions. They get into the material. Yeah are outside circumstances. Yeah. And they're very general about it. Hmm. And it could be me or it could be somebody else. It's just the picture's always the same, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that way. Yeah. I, I believe in me as a person. Yeah. And until I feel like um, I've worked through some things and I have a better understanding about who I am and what I'm about, I think that at that point I'd be more able to help another individual, although I help people now. Yeah. So you want to uh, accept it in your mind before you are able to... Well, I can accept it in my mind. I want to be... money on it right. so that you can live. Right. I want to be more de I want to be more mature with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's too I'm many people that are... Uh, right, I just don't want False wanna... people. Right. They call themselves psychics. I don't want to take somebody's money and uh, have them walk away and feel like they got nothing for them because there's been too many t I've, I've gone a psychic maybe ten times my whole life. Yeah. Three times to Joe, and I really felt he was real fair. It cost, the first time it was like 25 bucks to spend an hour and a half with me. Mm -hmm. He was good, and then it went up to 35 the last time I saw him. But I've been down, I've gone to some other people that charged me 45 bucks, mm -hmm. and I've sat there. And they told me nothing, hmm. nothing that I could, you know, and there's, and the, or they say that they're, I went to this one lady and she said, oh, I'm going to go in a trance and start channeling. So what you're going to, what you're reading is not going to be me, it's going to be somebody else. And I'm watching her. Hmm. I didn't see no difference in her. Hmm. And, what, and, and I'm thinking if somebody's channeling or, or they say that this entity is going to come in there hmm. themselves and, and they're going to know her thing, then I'll ask a certain question and then they'll say, well, I can't answer that. Well, yeah. hell, yeah. if they're supposed to be in touch with the universal mind, yeah, are they, they the why can't they answer that then? Yeah. So then that makes me feel like, yeah. I mean, when they can't even comment on it. Yeah, that's something. So that I don't believe it, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Things like that bother me. Okay, what else do you want to know about me? Um, <coughs> how do you feel about yourself and the people that you're involved and working with? Um, I'm very happy in helping people. Uh, I like to help people. And I feel that uh, UFOs are real. They're here. I have pictures of them. I have hundreds of pictures of them. I have pictures of the aliens and uh, drawings of pe what people saw, the sketches that they made. And I have stories going back to 10,000 BC of um, visitors coming down from the clouds in air, airships and um, my hieroglyphics uh, of stories from 1500 BC of uh, the same thing, fire circles coming across the sky and scaring the hell out of King Thutmose's the third's entire army. And it's in hieroglyphics right there in black and white, or grief, or <laughs> you know, hieroglyphics in stone. So um, it, they go back a long, long ways, and um, I made up an exhibit 
and I've been exhibiting, well, I started back in September of 85 um, by getting a um, meeting together at the library and, and I told them, I says, I want to see if anybody's interested in talking about UFOs. So they said, okay. So uh, they said, we'll give you a meeting room. I said, well, I'd like one once a month so I can hold a monthly meeting and see how it turns out. He said, oh, very good. So I went down to my library and they gave it to me and I started holding meetings on the third Wednesday of the month, every month. And um, I got six people the first time, or and then 10, and then 15, and 17, and 20. And uh, eventually uh, word spread and it grew and more and more people became interested and now I get 40 to 50 people every meeting. Do they donate? Do they have a well, we just started the donation came going around the last meeting. Is there a suggested donation or is it an open? No, uh, no it's like open. A, but uh, offering or whatever you're yeah. able to give? I'm going to try and get it to be where it's a $2 donation. Uh, just put it on a can. If anybody has it, they can put it in. If you don't have it, you don't have to. And uh, that's basically how we st I stated when I passed the donation can around because um, this information costs a lot of money to get, you know, and they want, they're, they now want the top information. Right. I just spent, like, uh, I spent $100 to buy a video, and we watched an $89, $95, $89, cent video last month for an hour and a half, and uh, I had to buy it, and mm -hmm. finally I said, you know, you want me to get the good stuff, I could, you know, I'm going to pass the can around. So they donated, and I got $25 out of the meeting. And uh, I take my UFO books, doubles, to the meeting too, and I sell them there and make a little money on that too. But it goes right back into other books or, uh, or new videos and different things. I don't make any money on it. You know. sure. So um, anyway, the meetings start getting real exciting, and they start, people, more and more people start coming, and the word starts spreading, and they put me in the paper several times. And um, Trent Times came out and did a full-page article on me with pictures and all. And uh, the one I gave you was a uh, Mercer County Messenger uh, article with the picture in it uh, last October. And uh, then uh, I said, would you, if I made up, if I had some pictures of UFOs, would you like to exhibit them at the library? And they said, yeah, we'd love to see some pictures of UFOs. <laughs> So I started getting, buying pictures and um, make, blowing them up to 8x10s and displaying them at the library. They have like a big display case, showcase, you know, eight, uh, eight or ten foot table by three feet or four feet. And I just put them in there and um, put the little story along with them from each photograph. Who took them, what, 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 where it was at, what city or country, what their names were and what the description of what they saw. And uh, they loved it. So now I got more and more pictures and now I have a couple hundred pictures. And I've got, I put them on these big four by eight sheets. You see it over there? Staying against the wall? Oh yeah. That's a four by eight sheet of um, insulation board that they put on building their right, house. Sheeting. Right, Well I put four of them together and hinged them together. Four of them. And, uh, like a big panel. Right, so now this is like the greatest exhibit in the world on UFOs. It even beats CUFOs, which is a national organization that beats their exhibit, I feel. <laughs> because there's a lot more information on it. I have 125 pictures on there and stories of UFOs and aliens and where they come from and things like that. <coughs> How much do you know about? I know everything in the world. Though. UFOs. <laughs> I'm probably one of the top authorities in the entire world. How does that make you feel? Tremendous. Yeah? Yeah. Like elated? Is that why David was so anxious to call you after he got, what, four years ago or whatever? Um, well, he, no, he was a, he didn't, he heard of me, but he didn't know too much about me. He doesn't look into UFOs that much. He is now. But he was only mainly interested in uh, his type of research, which was um, in abduction cases, regressing the person and finding out what they saw and what the, the, the rhythm, the rhythm of the abduction. Sure. And right now, that's one of the uh, top 
areas uh, of new information that we're getting out of UFO research is the abduction cases through regressive hypnosis. Now uh, we're trying to uh, do these MRIs and CAT scans to get physical proof of uh, abduction cases. Well, I was asking earlier as far as like um, well, when David said that if I would have made that tape to bed anyway, basically he probably would have never heard it because there's a backlog. Yeah, he had a lot of people that wrote. He had about 2,500 people wrote that wrote him after his Omni magazine article. Huh. 1987, and I think he's just about getting finished getting back to the people now. And there was another article in the Omni magazine just last month, I th no, uh, this uh, January issue, I think, uh, with a um, story about what he went through after and what he came up with with um, all the letters that he went through. So uh, he was really, um, he got a lot of new information. He'll be using it. It's not that he's not going to get back to the people. He will. Right. He's sincere. Well, I guess why I was so shocked that I guess I kind of just slid into this whole situation. I mean, there was I didn't even have to wait, kind of, basically. You know, it's like I called you up and I was able to just slide yeah. right in. Yeah. You're, you're, uh, you're getting into the... Uh, well, you're going to be talking to the top three authorities in abduction cases in the world, and uh, you'll be able to learn a lot about UFOs while you're here. What, um, uh, I can tell you all kinds of things, but I can't because you're too new into the subject. You've been into it all your life probably, but um, you're just learning what it is, and it's going to be hard for your mind to accept a lot of it, because it might be too hard for you to accept it, but uh, eventually you will, if you want to learn the truth, and um, it'll be easier for you, because now you'll realize what it's all about. Well, I think just coming up here, making the first step was, um, is real important for me. Yeah, that's right, it is. Um, I feel... Good Wait, that, uh, what do you feel? What, what do you? Why did you come up here? Oh. <laughs> why did you come up here? <gasps> I came up here to find out. To why get, did you come to see me? Well, to find out what what actually is going on, because I know something's going on. Now, whether it's on extraterrestrial level or poltergeist or entity level, mm -hmm. I know something's going on. Yeah. And but I feel it's extraterrestrial. And obviously, after telling you my story, you feel the same way too. But I, went, I was to the breaking point where something had to change for me. I had to come to an understanding with you. Yeah. Because I couldn't, my psychological, emotional profile was deteriorating because of this preoccupation with trying to figure this whole thing out and, and feeling like there was there's a, something pulling on my gut that I, I'm trying to rehash in my mind. I'm trying to figure out there's a there's a, a low level of something gnawing at me. Yeah, and that wants to come out. And right. You want to seek it and find it. And especially it. after, you know, the experience, especially just the other night. Well, that's probably your subconsciousness um, trying to give you more new information and your consciousness uh, trying to grasp it. Am I so far off key to think that the other night when they came, mm -hmm. that... You mean when you were sleeping and you were woken up by the rattling of the... Uh, the lampshade, yeah, that lampshade. was Monday night, and yeah. I felt like they had picked me up, mm -hmm. you know, I like, and they were doing the hands-on touch, the laying yeah. of hands as I explain it, and then I had semi-consciousness through it. Mm -hmm. I really believe, part of me feels like they're allowing me to be more conscious. Yeah. Do they do that? Yeah. Is there any point that I'm going to be able to actually start communication with them at some level? Uh, it's up to your own mind when you are, are ready for that. Yeah. You have to decide. You want to do it. And are then, there certain and then you start that asking I can practice? questions. Yeah, you can start learning what questions you want to ask them and then um, write them down and go over them in your mind that the next time this happens. Uh, and you're woken up or you have this feeling 
you want to you want these questions to pop into your mind so that you can ask them. Can they read my mind? Yeah, they always read your mind. They know everything you're doing. They know everything you did in your life, really? or they can find out, and they uh, know what you're gonna do. Well, they know uh, every little thought you you think. Uh, so, in most cases. If so, want to. so best way, did they, do you think that they knew that I was coming here? They probably did. Do you think that that's okay with them? Yeah. Do you think? Otherwise, uh, you wouldn't be here. I was wondering if I wasn't going to get in a car wreck or something, you know, <laughs> or yeah. I could just, I would just see myself after no, they, learning they about all this, and on my on my way home, I get in some freak accident or get hit by lightning or something. No, they, yeah, I had that fear too. <laughs> Now and then. But but okay, I mean, now you no. found out. Now we got a zapper. You know? Right, right. No, but they, she's you know, a mark. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to find out. we got to get rid of her. No. <laughs> they had that thing, that idea too, you know. But uh, more, they're letting more and more people find out about them. Well, they want us, don't they, they want us to know? They want us to find out about them now. Yeah, because um, this is what Dave found out. This is what I found out. Bud is finding this out. Um, with his people. This is how they I want feel. us to know that they're there. And if they if they are able to convey that feeling with more and more and more people as they push buttons in their people's minds and say, Okay, it's time for you to find out, you know, now's the time, start telling people about us, you know, then they won't have to land on the White House lawn like everybody used to think, you know, in order to prove that they're here. It'll be a generally accepted idea in everybody's mind uh, that they push the buttons on, and that's Do you know how many people, people I'm starting to talk to about this now? But I'm being selective about it. Yeah. But only with some of my friends, you know, that mm -hmm. are on a more seem like they're a higher consciousness type yeah. individual. Yeah. More intellectual. Not just the Billy uh, Bob's open, down there. Right. Open-minded. Right, and yeah. and they're real excited about it, mm -hmm. and um, they want to know. They want to know. But I also feel like part of me, I'm, I'm well, you know, can, it's like I'm, I'm, my part of my role is I'm, tape, you know. yeah, right, <laughs> I'm going to let Michael and, and some of my friends hear these tapes. Yeah. Because this is a way of educating them. Right, right. This is a way of getting the word out. That, but I feel that. that we're supposed to do that in some way. You feel that. Yeah. I feel like this, is, I feel like they're letting me be more conscious now that, that maybe I'm maturing in a way where I can handle it more, and yeah. they know that, and so they're giving me more to handle. Right, that's absolutely But right. I'm also supposed to go out there, and, and it's not like a conscious thought where, okay, I'm going to go talk to this individual. No, it's it's almost like I'm drawn to certain individuals, or it I have... Drawn to certain individuals. Yeah, that I have right. certain... Well, they're drawing you toward them, and they're drawing them toward you. That I, there's certain individuals that are my friends, like yeah. I said, are higher consciousness type individuals that I'm talking to this about. Now, some of my other friends, I'm not even talking to right. them about it. Some of them are too closed-minded. But some of but the people that I'm talking about are very intelligent people. They're spiritually conscious. Yeah. They're talented. You know, with their hands, they have technical abilities. Yeah. They're the, some of the most talented people mm -hmm. that I know that are the ones that I'm talking to about this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there's a very, and I and I can see in my mind who, if if you had a whole group of people, mm -hmm. you're gonna only have a select few out of there that would be the the prime of the yeah. species. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Basically. Mm -hmm. And I and my friends are basically the ones that I'm talking to about this are the prime. The prime of, of people. people. Right. Yeah. That would be able to take this information and use it in a positive way or develop it further mm -hmm. and work towards a common interest yeah. for the whole. Yeah. For the good of the whole. Yeah. Well maybe it'd be great, you know, something like uh, but maybe you can do something like what I'm doing down in the library down there and have a meeting once a month and let the people get together and put it in the community notice bulletin in the newspaper and in the back of me bulletin board in the Kmart. Right. Know, what I want to do is I'm going to, but I need shopping center. more education about it. I need to, I need to establish. Well, you tell them what you know. Right. And tell them, you know, give them the tapes. I can send more information down to you. I need to, to establish you. You myself. You can become a, um, 
uh, one of my group leaders, so to speak, of your area, of your city. Because I know there's mm -hmm. lots, I'm running into... Uh, and uh, that way people can get together and talk about it for just two hours, you know, you're only going to have a meeting for two hours. And, and then talk about it and let them tell you their I've got people coming up to me right now, right, and saying and, uh, that that know that I'm, oh, they're, oh, you're talking to ETs again, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you can become one of and then I'll down say, there. and I'll tell them, yeah, well, I'm going to go do this. And then, and, then, and then they go, well, you know, I've got some things that have happened to me, too. You see that? See, and then they That's tell perfect. me, and, and I'm like, I want to go see that lady. You know. And record their story, you know? Just turn the tape recorder on when they start telling you the story and ask them when it happened and uh, what type, what day it was, uh, what, whether it was day or night, and what they saw. I find yeah. that it's hard for them to articulate. That it's, it's hard for them to articulate how they feel about it or even dis in description. And in the end, you can ask them how they feel about it and get their personal thoughts. Because I, I know that, um, I know one reason why that they probably drug me is because the only emotion I experienced at the time was such extreme horror that I would go into shock or heart seizure, you know? What do you mean? Oh, oh. When they, when, whenever they're around well, me, that when they, they dose me out with whatever they do to, to get me distort in that distorted yeah. or altered mind space. Yeah where they wipe my emotions out and I'm limp. Mm -hmm. Or they black me well, out. Well, they do that with everybody in the beginning. But now, like Alice, um, I found out, you know, this has hap been happening all her life. And uh, as time progresses on, they've become more and more open to her. And now, she was even able to ask them questions this, this last time that they took her. And, uh, they asked her, Dave and I start getting her to ask, put questions in her mind so that she knew what to ask him when this happened. And uh, she finally did it and we got the answers to uh, Dave's question and to my question. And um, we called Dave up the next day and told him, and he got so excited, he said, oh my God, he said, I gotta put this in my book. He's writing a book about it and he's just finishing it up. And, he's a, and he, he grabbed his book out of the uh, mailer and uh, added more, uh, added our story to it, Alice's story to it. And uh, said, this is great, this is just what I wanted, my answers, you know. And uh, so he added that part to the book. And uh, his book is now going to the publishers and uh, being printed. But um, you will be able to get more and more open with him. And, and, eventually start asking them questions. Um, whatever you think in your mind, they read. They read your mind and know what you're thinking. So if you ask them a question in your mind, you will get an answer right away. Can I tell them, are they selected who that they want to deal with? Yeah, they've selected who they want to deal with. But how do they have this process that they, how, what's their, how do, what's their criteria? Uh, I like to say uh, you, ha you have a special um, metagene or uh, cells within you which make you a very high uh, talented um, individual to their purposes and for their purposes and um, therefore uh, th these genes have been in mankind ever since possibly they created us and um, or were injected with by them or ha however we got them but they're in everybody but they uh, come out at certain points with uh, th with certain people uh, their genes are allowed out at more psychic uh, parts um, and more intellectual uh, more open-mindedness and when and more um, maybe uh, um, able to uh, breed with the person in a much more favorable uh, attitude. Um, and 
when these genes come out in a person like you or me or Alice, um, then they start contact with the person as a child, normally around age seven or four in that area. Um, Alice was contacted uh, in, uh, at age seven. She saw an angel in her room when she was dying from diphtheria. Uh, that night she was expected to die. But the next morning, her mother found her, you know, running around, starving to death. Uh, she hasn't eaten for three days or so and, and wanted to play with her girlfriends and all. And she was only seven years old. And the uh, mother said, get back in bed. You, you know, you're, you're dying. You're sick. You know, she called the doctor. The doctor came out and here. The diphtheria was completely gone from her chest. And uh, all the disease had disappeared overnight, the night she was supposed to die. So he called it a miracle. Did anything like that happen to you? You were well, dying uh, of um, pneumonia, weren't you? Yeah. Were you expected to die? They said I would have died if I didn't get to the hospital that night. Mm -hmm. I probably would have died at home. Okay. That evening, basically, that I had depleted my electrolytes and my systems were shutting down. And yeah. They immediately, when I went, because I woke up that morning, I was so ill for so long that morning when I woke up, I had pneumonia the year before, so I knew what it was like. Mm -hmm. And I woke up that morning and I, and I go, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to die. Yeah. That thought came in my mind and I called my brother up and I said, um, you've got to take me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Jeff was at work and my brother happened to be in town. Yeah. And um, so he came by, took me to the doctor. He ran. Uh, I, my, I couldn't even stand up. I was so weak. Yeah. And um, I was laying on the, the f waiting in the on the floor in the waiting room, you know. And uh, anyway, when they, was that? How old were you? This was just two years ago when oh, this happened. Okay. 1987. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway. Went and they did the chest x-ray and ran a blood count and they stuck me on IVs right then and there in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Get her in the hospital right now. Yeah. And basically told me that you're very lucky because you would have gone tonight, probably. Mm. So now, when, were, when do you feel you had any weird experiences around that time? I don't recall any weird experiences as far as what extraterrestrials or anything. Well, anything weird with an angel or nothing. I've never a had ghost that. or blue light or a lighted figure in the room. Nothing like that at that time. No. How about the year before? Well, I had that missing time. Yeah, yeah. And I had probably dreams off and on of, <laughs> you know, my usual UFO dreams. Yeah. Did you almost die as a child at any time? I don't remember. I don't know. Oh, okay. You told me a few things last night. And, um, oh, we went over the symbols. That's right. We were talking about the symbols. And, uh, oh yeah, Sunrise Mountain. Las Vegas area. Yeah, are there any, have there been a lot of sightings in the Las Vegas area? Yeah. Um, matter of fact, just last year, uh, John Lear, his wife and, and daughter saw uh, a UFO. He lectures Rainbow out there. colored. Yeah. Uh -huh. He lectures out there once in a while. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, well, I just, uh, okay. Um, I've been writing him for quite a while now. He's one of the top people in UFO, UFOs right now also. Yeah, he, know, and he, he knows a lot about the technology stuff because of his dad and the, yeah. the government stuff. Or yeah. The, which, yeah. Right. He knows a lot. There. He's got a lot of informers in the government, high authorities in the government. So maybe you can let me read some of them letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will in due time. <laughs> Let's see, you drew some symbols for me last night and you said yeah. uh, Oh yeah, you dream of the UFOs with the people in groups of squares. But you know During it's... the catastrophe. Huh? 
I was thinking about the, the one of those dreams I had when I was one of the first dreams I had where I was in a stone. You know, the stone, basically the rock. Okay, the in the caves. In the cave, you, yeah. Yeah, you like know. it was a rock stone structure, mm -hmm. and the the door was actually stone. There was moved. an actual door on there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a, but the stone moved. The stone. Moved. It wasn't a door like a wooden door with a doorknob. No, it was a very ancient type. Well, round stone. Or? No. No. It was block. More a block. block. How did it move? I don't know. It was moved. It just slid. But the interior. It slid open. Yeah. It slid. Like and open, left an opening. Yeah, and we walked in, and like the the ground is basically dirt and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like it was made out of earth materials. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it wasn't, but it wasn't wood. Yeah. It wasn't a structure of wood, and it wasn't a structure of metal. Yeah. It was made from the earth, mm -hmm. as far as like rock and sand stuff like that. Yeah. And the textures were very. Uh, rock and sand it wasn't but it wasn't sheathing and mm -hmm. wire mesh and adobe no it was like a very ancient type of, of structure yeah and the symbols were and these other you know these symbols they weren't like hieroglyphics but they were symbols mm -hmm. that were etched in the walls but they were bigger mm -hmm. now i would say that they're about this big each letter well, they were only symbols. Yeah. It wasn't like a story. It was like specific symbols. Yeah, what about that? So they were like pictographs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, Indians were famous for that. Mm -hmm. Ancient people were famous for that. Where they look similar to these symbols that you wrote here on the paper? Or were they different? Somewhat similar as far as being geometric, they weren't curly and wavy and form no. like you know. So I mean, these are the symbols that you're referring to. In Those were the that was a type of writing or something along that that I saw in that dream a couple of weeks ago, that oh, was okay. being computer fed to me, you know, on a printout. Oh yeah. There was a paper printout, and this was like flashing by me real quick speed. And you knew what it meant. But I, yeah, I understood it like speed reading or something going right by me and it was black lettering on white background mm -hmm. it was